Yo guys, it's Broads here coming at you with another video today. We got something special like the Call of Duty World War 2 trailer and live stream just came out and I want to have a couple words about that trailer and give my input being a guy I haven't played Call of Duty forever. I'm not a hardcore veteran, but I did come in around COD 4, you know, the last World War 2 game which was World at War. So let's get into it. So firstly, I want to talk about the trailer. I've only seen it but probably about four or five times, maybe even three. But from what I have seen and what it does look like, this game looks really good. It looks like one of the best games we've ever had. Uh, of course, you know, boots on the ground, all that. I'm so, so happy that it's gone back to that. I personally hate, like, the jetpack system. I adjusted to it in Black Ops 3, but, you know, Infinite War Warfare came about. And I was just like, nah, I haven't, I haven't played Infinite Warfare, like, in months. Probably, like, level 10. Like, no prestige. So, uh, to see to see World War Two is, I feel, a really, really nice thing to see. I mean, there has got to be some pressure on this, this development studio. I mean, the last Boots on the Ground COD came back in 2013, which was Call of Duty Ghosts, and not the best game that was the last Boots on the Ground game. So, there is a little bit of pressure, and... Definitely, hopefully they live up to it. But you know what? After seeing, I did just watch the live stream that they did produce. You know, Michael Condry and the other dude's name. You know, I just researched this. Uh, Glenn Schofield. Those guys, man, they look passionate. They look like what they have done is something, you know, that they have not done before. And even said that Glenn Schofield um, goes... He's been making games for 26 years. I mean, 26 years. I'm not even 26 years old. I'm 18. There you go. Bit of a fact. But he says, this is the best game we've ever made. 26 years and that's the best game we've ever made. Three years to make this game. Two and a half at the current period of time. I mean, that's a pretty big statement. For anyone to make. Anyone, man. Like Another thing I want to touch on that one of the co-founders co said of Sledgehammer Sledge Games, Michael Condry, says... This is a very personal game. This is a very humbling game. And being a World War II game, it needs to be. And I feel there is so much pressure on this studio, as I've just previously stated. But there is more pressure in the fact that this is World War II. I mean, I'm, not, I'm no World War II expert. I'm you know, no historian or anything of that matter. But what I do know is that it is one of the most gruesome and hardcore, most just brutal times in history and anyone who does have family members that did fight in World War 2 you know I mean I personally don't but for what they had to go through man like kudos to, man I no words really so they really do need to get this right they really do need to get the 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 visuals and they do have the systems to do it these days which they did not have back in the day 10 years ago they did not have the man I know I'm rambling, and I'm just, everything's spurting in my head, but if you have not seen the movie Saving Private Ryan, and you have, even the, even the, the whole movie, just watch it, right now, stop this, go and watch it, with Tom Hanks, I think Tom Hanks is in it, yeah, he is, go and watch that bloody movie, man, that movie is probably one of the best of all time, not the best, but one of them, like, it's in the top 100 for sure, and it is just gruesome, the, the visuals you do see is... Just be prepared, man, because that is just some hardcore stuff. And just know that that is the sort of stuff I want in this game. That is the sort of stuff that needs to be in this game. On Normandy, the beach, D-Day, man. That is historical, and it is gruesome. And this game needs to get that scene right. It was in the trailer for, I don't know, like 20 seconds. And, man, from what I, from what I saw, they didn't quite put in the most gruesome bits, which I hope that they do to show the world, and this generation, they said this multiple times, that this generation has not seen the gruesome uh, events that did happen in World War Two. So I guess just to wrap that sort of segment up of this talk, I want to say that they really, yeah, they do need to get it right, and it is one of the most important things that in this game, for the campaign that I need, that needs to happen. So, campaign... The campaign for me in this game needs to be right. It needs to hit you hard. And that is the the major factor in this campaign that's going to work. 
and I'm more excited for the campaign than this multiplayer because, you know, World War Two it did happen. And just, they've got the visuals, they've got everything to do it, you know? But you look back, you got, you got Modern Warfare, the series. What was the most... The biggest attraction in that campaign, it was the relationships between the characters. It was Captain Price. It was Soap. It was Ghost. It was all them iconic faces that we have not really seen. I mean, I haven't played the Infinite Warfare campaign, and I've heard that it's pretty good. I probably should play it, but it does not live up to Modern Warfare. You cannot. I don't think any, any, any Call of Duty game will ever do it. But this one may have a chance, man. It, these events happen. These events did happen. These are real pl- people that are pl- that are in the game. Those soldiers, what was it Red Daniels or something? I don't know the name, like off the top of my head, but I think it goes something like that. He was in there. He was there. And when you've you've got that sort of connection, and when you know that that's in the game, and it just makes the experience a whole lot better, a whole lot bigger, and it needs to be that. And the one thing I hope that is in it, and I, I saw a glimpse of it is drama. Drama. Saving Private Ryan. Drama. You see the intense scenes. There was one, one scene in the trailer where there was a punch they even talked about in the in the uh, live stream. There needs to be that those dramatic moments and the characters, they really need to be defined. They really need to have a personality that stands out. One of the guys, I can't remember the, the dude, but it's like the commanding officer sort of guy. He's, you know, puts mission before man, you know, sort of thing. And I think that's awesome. I... I really think that'll be a vital part in his character. And the other guys, those characters need to be developed. And insane characters, Modern Warfare characters, Captain Price, the iconic, you know, brim hat, soap, you know, the the face paint. So I really do hope that they build these characters. And if they do, it'll make this campaign successful. It won't be, I can tell you now, it will not be as successful as Modern Warfare. Um... But damn, it'll come close. The next thing I want to talk about is... I saw a comment, and I thought it was worth mentioning in the video. If there's no German storyline, I'm not buying the game. And... Call of Duty? It's been an American-themed game. I don't see there being a German storyline. I really don't. And even Michael Connery says... That he tells this incredible story of heroism. Heroism. Sorry. To honour the men and women who sacrificed to bring around victory. That is verbatim. He did say that. Bring around victory. I don't think we're getting a German storyline just from that statement. Just from that sentence. So, enough of the campaign. I really do think that the campaign needs to be the main feature of this game. And I'm more excited for the campaign than the actual multiplayer. But, you know, the multiplayer is you know, the biggest thing of Call of Duty. So, it is always going to be mentioned in a video. They have this thing uh, it's called Divisions. You can enlist in a unit. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, it immerses you in the World War Two scene, sort of, I think. Even though, I don't know what happened in World War Two, whether you could choose or not, I'm not sure that you could do that. But I definitely think that you, having a choice to enlist in a unit is definitely a very good game. And the other thing that interests me, actually, was this thing called Headquarters. Headquarters. And it's basically, I showed a picture, I'll put it up now. And it's like, I don't know, sort of like a base thing where, like, you can talk to the members of your team before before going out to battle. And I think that's pretty cool. I mean, you go back to World War Two, they would have had this, you know, sense of camaraderie, which they did speak about it in the post-show, and it needs to be a big thing in the game. Side note, com- camaraderie. You can have like interactions with other player, other players as well, and I thought what it, what it could be cool. This is sort of some initiatives, if you will. Oh, it'd be so cool, you know. You could have like actions, you know, like some guy, you know, busting open a cigarette, you know, popping a lighter, you know, having a smoke, you know. You could play games, you know, like board games that they have back then, you know, a bit of arm wrestling, you know, maybe even, you know, some side games that they could add in. I think that could be pretty cool. I mean, we've never really had a Call of Duty that really has had that aspect and it ties in really well to the World War Two sort of sort of aspect of the game and I don't think they could have done it in a scene previous in previous games, maybe in like the modern concepts, but when you're talking camaraderie, when you're talking mateship, 
you think in World War Two, you think in World War One, and I think it's a great, great initiative. Now they did also put in a co-op sort of twist. They showed showed a picture of a zombie. Put it up now. It said it was you know the Third Reich creating an army in the last ditch of the war, and there's one word really that can describe this. It is zombies. The guy even said it. The host of the of the live stream even said zombie. Oh, that's a Nazi zombie. And, man, it'll be interesting. I really did like Infinite Warfare Zombies. I probably like that better than, you know, the multiplayer. But, you know, there's, there's you're going, you're going, hey, guys, you're, you're barking up a tree. You know, Treyarch, man, they started this back in World at War with zombies. And you're going, man, you got a lot of pressure to live up. you got a lot to look up to. You're going up... If it is zombies... Oh, I'm actually interested... And I want to hear your guys, your guys' opinions too... For the people that are going to watch this... I want to hear... What 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 will make it stand out? What will make it... Better... In their opinion... It isn't... I don't think it's going to be better... I think... Any co-op mode... Ever from now on... Will be better than zombies... But... If it is zombies... How would it... Make it better... In their eyes... In Sledgehammer games... What will make it different... I think is the better word... From zombies... In... Uh, you know, World at War and Treyarch. It is not confirmed by any stretch. No way. It's not confirmed. But, damn, it looks pretty confirmed to me. And now let's... So let's talk about the gameplay. Now, Michael Condry did say that this game rewards gun skill and strategy. This is multiplayer, by the way. I mean, that is everything that... The Call of Duty community wants, as well as boots on the ground. They want an even playing field. They don't... I hope there's no, like, variance in Infinite Warfare. And it, there probably will be. I mean, like, you're thinking, like, mods on guns back in World War Two. It's more doable nowadays, weapon variants, but I think they will incorporate it somehow in some way into the game. But he did say rewarding gun skill and strategy. And I think that that makes me happy because... You know, for all the hardcore Call of Duty players that are pretty good and want to maintain a good KD, you know, like that's that's a pretty a pretty big big statement to say. And he did also show some of the weaponry. There was talk how can you not have an M one grand in a World War Two game? Any, you know, previous war game. How can you not have an M one grand? Even the iconic like like reload, like ping, pop, whatever you want to call it, I think that is, you know that's nostalgia right there, just that just that sound. Uh, they did mention an STG-44, and that was in previous games. I think it's in um, COD 4 and was in World at War, I think, from vivid memory. And it's, you know, one of those, like a like a thin sort of gun with a with the machine gun sort of sound. They did say an MG-42, which is in Battlefield 1. That is cool. That'll just, uh, that'll rip shit up, man. That'll be heavy. And there was no other talk... Uh, for weapons, but what I did see was I did see a flamethrower in the trailer, and I wonder could they incorporate this as a sort of secondary weapon in the game, or will there have to be certain certain classes? You know, as as you know, maybe maybe sort of touching with the sort of specialist base. I oh, when you're talking specialist. Um, I don't think specialist is what they'll call it, you know, for here. But when I see flamethrower, I think of definitely a specialist sort of class. And specialists, they've been in the game since Black Ops 3. They were in, they are in Infinite Warfare. There's, you know, you can assume safely, I reckon, that they'll be in Call of Duty World War 2. I mean, I reckon it'd be pretty cool. I reckon... That, you know, it'll stand out this year. It didn't stand out this year, no way. It stood out in Black Ops 3. It didn't stand out this year. It will stand out next year, I reckon. And this flamethrower could be a little hint in what... Maybe there will be a specialist in the game, but generally you wouldn't think there would be specialists in, in World War 2. You know, you have... Well, you could have, you know, but that's classes. Sorry, I'm thinking of my head here, but classes, you know, you have inf infantrymen, you have... Gunners, you have gunners, you have you know medics, but that's Battlefield One. Call of Duty's not that game. So 
Definitely, Flamethrower really does intrigue me. Tell me what you guys think as well. And that'll just about wrap it up for the gameplay. I mean, final thoughts, let's wrap it all up. This video is going to be pretty long, but it needs to be pretty long because this is a pretty big talking point in the Call of Duty history, not just this game, because it is stemming back to its roots, boots on the ground. And, guys, I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, this is great. I mean, I'm more hyped in this game than I have probably have been before and is probably the most, I will say this, probably the most hyped game in Call of Duty history. You may think Modern Warfare 3, and I will agree that it probably has the same hype that it did have in Modern Warfare 3, Call of Duty World War 2, of course, in the fact that we have not had a boots on the ground game in the next gen system. You can you can play them on the next gen system, I mean ghosts, yeah, alright, but we never have had a new, a brand new boots on the ground game. And it is Sledgehammer's first crack at a boots on the ground game. They they I don't know about their previous game's history. I probably should have looked at that, but if they have if they haven't, man, this is a big step. This is a big, big thing in Call of Duty, man. Call of Duty is it's back. It's if there is no question that it's back. I mean, there's hype. I mean, look, just look at the dislikes compared from last year's trailer to this trailer. Even though the views don't really match, just look at the dislikes, and it, you can just see, man, this is this is having a crack at Battlefield One. I mean, this definitely could be better than Battlefield One. It definitely has the potential to be better. It has the setting to compare it, not the World War One setting, but it's not a modern game compared to a previous, um, you know, World War One game. It's you know they're relative like thirty years or so. Uh, difference. So you could compare it to that. I know I'm rambling. This is going to go on forever. But yeah, that's my opinion, man. Thank you guys so much for watching. I mean, let me know what you guys think on the multiple things that I've said I want you to think about. It's not, you know, history class. Should be history class. I think it. you can compare it to history class, you know. But definitely. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you guys next time.